Hey everyone, Sarah here. Welcome back to my channel, Never Out of Books. Today I am going to give you my May TBR and I think I'm going to participate in Chiclet-a-thon. I've been a little bit slumpy on my reading and I think this might be or just the pick-me-up that I need to get me going again. So Chiclet-a-thon is a month-long readathon in the month of May. It is hosted by Sophie, Jen, and Lisa. I will try to find and leave their channels below. There are prompts to fulfill. I'm going to do my best to fulfill the prompts, um, but I just want to read a lot of chiclet next month anyway, so no matter what happens. As for my choices, I am going to use their definition of what chiclet is, um, and it's a pretty broad definition that it is a novel that has a female protagonist. This is not always my personal definition of what chiclet is, but it is, I am going to go by their definition and we are going to read books. <laughs> also to complicate things, I am really, really, really trying to read my own books, books that I have on my shelves or on my Kindle, um, but definitely books that are on my shelves in the next couple months because our local library or one of our local libraries burnt down and they are currently accepting donations of books for either um, that they'll sell for money to help rebuild or if it's a very good a book then obviously they'll use it for their collection when they do reopen so there's a little bit of pressure for me to read and unhaul some books in the next couple months so I have that on my plate Plus, I'm still dealing with this long-term pesky reading challenge that I'm trying to do. So between all of this, it's going to turn very interesting very soon. So the challenges, I will show you what I'm going to read for the challenges and then I will show you everything else that I have that I'm thinking of reading. Yes, it's over ambitious, whatever. The first challenge is to read a Sophie Kinsella book. Sophie Kinsella really is the queen of chiclet if we're talking. I have read a lot of her books. I actually haven't read the Shopaholic series. For some reason it doesn't, it's not triggering me to want to read it, like I don't really want to. Um, but she does have a new book coming out. It I did request it from the library and it should be coming and hopefully I'll get to it. But it's I Owe You One. And it sounds like it's about a girl who just can't say no and starts running her family store or something like that. Anyway, I'm sure it's gonna be cute and delightful. The second prompt should not have been difficult at all, and yet it was because again, I'm trying to read my shelf, so it was a little bit like, oh my goodness. Um, but it is read a chiclet with a pair of heels on the cover. Um, so, <laughs> I have this, um, The Cozy Tea Shop in the Castle by Carolyn Roberts, and these ladies are wearing heels, so I'm counting it. I know that a lot of books have just big heels on the cover. It's very common, but um, again, I didn't have one of those books, so this is what we're going to have to do. This makes me happy because it's a bad tea shop, so it's like a win-win for me. I've had it on my shelf for a very long time. It's like the cover is absolutely, like, stinking adorable so yeah the third prompt is to read a historical chiclet and so this is where like my definition of chiclet kind of goes different than what they say so I just chose a couple things that I had on my shelf and hopefully they fit their definition um, but I have seven days in May by Kim Izzo this is a historical fiction it has a woman on the cover, so I'm assuming it's from a female perspective, although I don't know because I haven't read it yet. And it is about um, the sinking of the Lusitania. So, and plus it's, it's set in May, so like I feel like it's an appropriate time to read this book on many levels. Um, so hopefully this fits this challenge, but if not, I also have and you've seen this a bazillion times, An Expert in Murder by Nicola Upson. Um, this is like a cozy mystery sort of deal, but I mean, it's about, a few, it has a female protagonist, Josephine Tay, so I guess this could fit as well. The fourth prompt is um, a chiclet set in LA or Hollywood. I've already read a lot of chiclets that are set in, why, in LA or Hollywood, like all the ones that were on my TBR. Um, so again, I don't know if this one really does it or not, but I have Hate 
Dating You, Hating You by Christina Lauren. I read the first page and it was in LA and I mean, I think this kind of goes more romancy, but whatever, we're gonna put this as this challenge. The fifth challenge is to read a chiclet that is more heartfelt or has more deeper meaning behind it, uh, more like a woman's fiction sort of novel. I have a couple choices for this as well. On my Kindle, I have Digging In by Loretta Nyhan. And this is about a woman who was widowed and she kind of hits rock bottom and starts planting a garden and it becomes this massive garden that she ends up getting, you know, the neighbors involved. And then like, because I guess she's in a community, like some of the bylaws are being violated and so then there's all of that going on. But like gardens always seem profound to me. So, um, gonna count this. I also have this one, The Innkeeper of Ivy Hill by Julie Klassen. And this seems, a, it's a historical fiction, but it seems a bit, you know, there's like struggling with loss in here and, and a lot of changes for the protagonist who is female. And so I thought maybe this could hit this challenge as well. The sixth challenge is to read a domestic thriller. And it took me a very long time to realize what in the world a domestic thriller was. Like an embarrassingly long time because I picked up like a thriller, you know, I don't have a whole lot of thrillers on my shelf that feature females. And then I realized a domestic thriller has something to do with the home, like child abuse or, or some sort of abuse or things like that going on. And then I was like, oh, okay, now I get it. Um, that being said, I don't have a whole lot of that on my shelf either. Um, so I grabbed from, again, it's going to fit one of my other reading challenges, but I'm getting from the library. It ends with Us by Colleen Hoover. Colleen Hoover and I have a very tumultuous relationship. I do not always enjoy her books, but it starts with an I for one, which I need. And uh, two, I want to meet the challenge because I'm like that. So first I put on my list, before I realized what a domestic thriller really was, I put another book on my list, but it's YA. Um, and I don't usually think that that audience has chiclet necessarily for that audience. I, but I, anyway, whatever. I, I still am interested in reading this book. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave it on my TBR just for fun. Shade Me by Jennifer Brown. This is a thriller. The protagonist is female. She has synesthesia, which she sees feelings and emotions and things like that in bright color. And in this one, one of the girls in her school is killed and she has she's gonna try to figure out who in the world did it. So this is a trilogy. I've been very interested in reading this, although it does not hit any of my reading challenges, but I've been kind of into this sort of book, like the YA thriller thing has been kind of interesting to me. So we got this. As for some of the other chiclety sort of books that I could read this month, um, I have the first two books in this uh, cozy mystery series, Live and Let Chai and No Good Tea Goes Unpunished, both by Brie Baker. And they also like are about tea, which again is my thing. I have The Accidental Beauty Queen by Terry Wilson. And I think of the books, other than The Cozy Tea Shop in the Castle, this is the most chiclety sort of book that I have on my TBR. Like this is what I associate as chiclet. So I really would like to get to this. As of this filming, I still have two Neck Alley books that I would like to get to, to read and review. Both of them are like very classic chiclet sort of novels. First priority, because it comes out the soonest, is A Summer to Remember by Sue Moorcroft. The second is One Last Greek Summer by Mandy Baggett. Um, but this one is of lesser priority because this comes out at the end of June. As for audiobooks, uh, I am nowhere near finishing the audiobook that I currently have going, which is The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. So 
I will hopefully finish that sometime in May and then these right here are some of the physical books that I have audiobooks for to help get me through my TBR a little bit. So I'll probably pick one of those up. If I finish The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks in May, then I will pick up something chick -lady. Um, If I don't, then we'll just go from there. I don't listen to audiobooks incredibly quickly and often, so it's not like my primary source of reading. So we'll see how that goes in May. Anyway, I hope that a lot of other people participate because it makes things very fun for me. <laughs> when there's lots of people on Twitter and I see people's tweets and things going on, it makes me happy to be participating in something. And so if, and if you've read any of these books or have any questions or thoughts on the chiclet genre or what genre books are or any of those, you know, your definition of what chick chiclet is, please feel free to leave any of that down below as well as if you've read any of these books or and highly recommend them. Uh, and I will talk to you again soon. I know I've been a bit scarce. I don't see that changing anytime soon because this is busy month, end of the school year. I homeschool my daughter, so it's like there's a lot going on. Uh, <laughs> lots of field trips going on this time of year. She's everywhere. Uh, so <laughs> it's, it gets a little bit crazy. Uh, but hopefully I will get to some of these books um, and then get them out to the library to help the library. Uh, so I will talk to you all again later. I hope you're reading something wonderful. Bye.